Every month I post an Ask Me Anything thread on the podcast Patreon at patreon.com slash permaculturepodcast. Most of the time these threads are about design and plants, like the best time to transplant elderberries, or how to use garlic tops after the bulbs have been processed. Sometimes, though, we get away from permaculture and a fun or silly question comes up, like what is my favorite Halloween candy? To which the answer is anything with chocolate and peanuts, whether that's the whole legume or peanut butter. In the AMA for October 2020, however, Joey asked something different. Their question was, Do you have an opinion on the recent debate between Joel Salatin and Chris Newman of Sylvanaqua Farms concerning racism and land access? If you'd asked me even a few years ago if race was an issue with land access, I would have said no. The issue for me then wasn't race, but socioeconomic or class divide. Most of us were just too poor to buy any appreciable amount of land as wealth gets concentrated into the hands of developers and speculators who could buy up the large chunks for cash and sell back ever smaller parcels at even higher prices for people who wanted a suburban or rural home site. I saw this time and time again in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, my home from 1996 to 2007, as I knew several people with family farms who were offered millions of dollars for land that was later turned into developments. The same pattern repeated itself when I relocated to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, as the price per acre climbed to $100,000 or more. Now, living outside of Washington, D.C., undeveloped land here goes for over a million dollars an acre, if you can find any for sale. Even if you do find something less expensive, you're going to be a long distance away from a market where you can sell your goods. Here where I am now in Falls Church, Virginia, the farmer's market is populated by some farmers who travel two hours one way for the pop-up Saturday market where customers are willing to pay $6 for a dozen organic eggs or for two portobello mushrooms and $8 for a quart of yogurt. Through this lens of class and the concentration of wealth, I came to read White Trash, The 400-Year Untold History of Class in America by Nancy Eisenberg in 2018, which challenged my ideas about race and intergenerational wealth as it relates to class. Then the work of urban planner Jeff Speck, who I interviewed earlier this year, expressed concerns about the displacement, or gentrification, which occurs with development that disproportionately impacts people of color. Jeff suggested The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein, which added clarity to why this is the case. For generations in the United States, with roots in the enslavement of people, redlining of properties to exclude black people from government services, and black exclusion laws in the origins of Oregon, people of color have had less access to property and land. When and where property was available, the land was marginal compared to what whites could purchase and at an increased price compared to white mortgages. Because of those readings and by becoming aware of the systemic policies, both tacit and explicit, which existed and continue to exist within this society, I agree with Chris's perspective that agriculture in America has been guided by racist processes. Land, wealth, and the ability to grow food has been excluded to black and indigenous people of color for generations. Whereas white farmers can regularly inherit their family farms across generations, and Joel Salatin is clear he inherited his farm from his family, black and indigenous farmers rarely have this possibility and instead, like Chris Newman, must exist on rented land. Those are my thoughts on racism and land access in America. What are yours? If you have an opinion on this topic, leave a comment or get in touch. Email show at the permaculturepodcast.com. Until the next time, spend each day exploring how we can decolonize permaculture while taking care of Earth, yourself, and each other. 